Hello. My name is Saidu Sinla. I attended Pace University's musical theater program from 2012 to 2016. I only auditioned for about three or four universities or musical theater programs. I wasn't completely sure what I wanted to study after high school. I just knew I loved performing and I loved being around other people that loved musical theater. Pace was probably the last choice um, and my last audition. I loved the people that I met. I loved the others, the, um, the current students that I met. Ironically, it was the only audition where I truly felt like myself performing. What I was hoping for with Uni um, Pace University was that it would be uh, a community of really passionate performers, young and like excited to just be in New York City and, and do um, just do theater. I didn't have a lot of uh, background or knowledge about what it meant to do musical theater or be in New York City doing musical theater um, because I, I was more of like an art kid. I liked to paint. I liked to be in like the art studio and did theater after school. When I was looking for different schools and, and doing tours, I noticed that a lot of the student body was white or, or not people of color. So I expected coming to a school in New York City to be more diverse. Um, and then that turned out to be the reality when I saw the people that I was going to be sharing the next four years of my life with. I was excited to be in an environment that was kind of somewhat similar to my environment growing up. I'm, I'm from Maryland. Um, I'm from a very suburban part of Maryland with a lot of diversity. I'm also African, so I, I exist in this microcosm of an African community, but go to like a school where there's like a white community, a black community, and we all like intertwine and interweave. Um, and I thought Pace was gonna be very similar to that. 17 year old Saidu loved performing because, I don't know, I wasn't a very expressive kid in my life. I, I was, but it took me a while to get comfortable around people. And then I was like, you know, wild and crazy. But I was kind of a, a shy, a shyer kid. Um, and performing gave me a space to kind of be as playful as I am in my internal world, like in the external world. And I was, I was very innocent about that. Like it was, it was so new to me. I had only started really performing like two years before I decided to go to university for musical theater. So I, I hadn't done a lot of academic um, experiences. I hadn't done a lot of acting or performance classes. So I really was open to anything that was gonna come to me and anything that I would have the opportunity to do. Three of the main like selling points of Pace University was the new musical theater division um, run by Ryan Scott Oliver. Um, and the diversity that was um, Pace University. The fact that they were taking new diverse students and putting them into new musicals and giving them the experience of creating um, what was gonna be the next generation of musical theater. Um, so I was really excited to come and, and do concerts and do workshops and do things that weren't already written because I kind of had the idea that there wasn't a lot written for people of color or written for, for people that looked like me. And I wanted to be somewhere that was gonna focus on that. It, was, it seemed very excited, exciting. Um, I'm here because I, I honestly think that Amy stole my joy of performing. I believe that the conditions that we were put in at Pace University in the musical theater department stole my joy and my, my dream from me. Like I was so happy and excited to do musical theater and it stopped being fun. It stopped being what it was meant to be, which is a place where you can discover who you are and, and grow from that. While I was at Pace, I retreated into myself in a way that 
I didn't really even understand at the time. I had no language or understanding of what it meant to completely throw boundaries up, you know, to protect yourself within an environment that felt incredibly unsafe. And yeah, I felt like I was in danger walking into any classroom that I was, I walked into at Pace within the musical theater department. You know, when you like someone and you're trying to get their attention and you, you observe them with other people and you see how happy they are and how excited they are to be with other people. Um, and you're just trying to get in their eyesight and trying to like get noticed by them in some way. That's how I felt um, engaging with Amy Rogers, the head of our department. I want to say it was junior year, we had a role assignment class, um, or a role assignment within a class with Amy Rogers, the head of our department, um, in which we were uh, asked to bring in a role that we felt completely represented us or we felt would be a dream to perform within our careers. There were students, uh, white students, um, that got full support from Amy as far as choosing what that role was going to be. Um, there was one student, Corey, who is the, a leading man type. He, he worked consistently or performed consistently throughout the four years we were at Pace. And he got like a list of like 12, six, 12 roles that Amy felt were perfect for him. Um, when I approached her to, to ask or ask for help, because I was kind of at a loss. So there was a lot of roles I, I had done before and I just didn't, I didn't want to do seaweed again as my role for, for what I was going to do the rest of my career. Um, um, and Amy said she had nothing for me. She had no options for me. She didn't know what I should do. And she actually said she didn't really care by the end of it. Um, so I chose and these assignments had to be, the roles had to be approved by her. So I, I came to her and asked if I could do Haywood from Scottsboro Boys. Uh, and her response was that I do not look like Joshua Henry um, based on body type or whatever in her mind uh, that role is supposed to be. I'll say I chose that role because it was rooted in the history of Black people in America. I wanted to learn more about this experience of this person that actually existed in the world and experienced this. Um, and af actually during my research found that he looked very similar to me. So it was, it was pretty hurtful to hear that I wouldn't have the opportunity to play this part because of how I looked or because of how Amy, the head of our department, believed I should look or this role should look. And when that situation came up where I, I, I went to Amy for help, we didn't really have that much of a relationship before that. And that was kind of a little way for me to kind of create some sort of relationship. And the fact that she didn't even care to, to help me out, like in the middle of school, in the middle of my education, uh, was very, it was very telling of the kind of person she was and the kind of care she gave to her students, her student body. And to have somebody with that much power completely discard you, it definitely, I definitely internalized it and, and held it inside and even justified it. You know, I, I justified why she had more to give to the white students than me or my black or people of color or, or my other peers that were not white. And I justified it by saying that this is how the world is gonna be. And these are the roles that are there for me. And Joshua Henry is really the only body type that should be a leading man as a black man. I justified it because that's what she told me as the head of our department. There's something strange that happens within acting classes where you're asked to step outside of your comfort zone and it's, it's framed in this way that 
it's supposed to make you a better actor and a better person. But a lot of the faculty that worked underneath Amy didn't create safe environments for us to explore these different uncomfortable parts of who we were. Specifically with a, a class we had sophomore year with Mark and Bill, um, our acting class, uh, the black students were put into positions to play slaves, the majority of the class, consistently. And it was never discussed, it was never, if it was brought, in, uh, if it was brought up, it was violently treated. I wanna use the word gaslight, but I like, I would say they, people were gaslighted into believing that they were um, negative, negatively um, affecting their education by not being willing to step into those uncomfortable situations. And this, this stemmed from just racial situations to situations where students were put into sexual situations and asked to go as far as, as, far as the, the teacher wanted them to. But by the end of it, the students, me and my peers, were pretty fed up and we, we spoke out about it to Amy, the head of our department. And we also voiced it to our teachers and were made to feel like we were completely ungrateful and not working hard enough. And I mean, there was a moment when I was so fed up with being attacked by my teachers that I, I got up and walked out because I wouldn't accept it in any other environment. And these people did not care to know me or know what their actions or their words was doing to me. Um, but at that point I was pretty much done and that was pretty early, early on in my four years. That was sophomore year. So pretty set the tone for the next two years, for sure. I would say going forward, I lost all trust of the faculty. Um, I didn't trust that they actually cared about me. I, I began to do this mental gymnastics of making myself fit into the different boxes or positions that I was being, being given because I felt like that would, that's what a good student should do. Um, but that was taken advantage of multiple times consistently throughout the rest of my experience in Pace musical, musical theater department. Um, I do not feel like the white students had to do that because of the amount of opportunities that they had to, to do whatever material that they wanted. There was a lot of students, a lot of people of color that I, I watched not get opportunities at Pace, but that was used against me because I was told that I should be grateful for those experiences. Or I, I, made my, I told myself that. I, I told myself that getting to play a janitor or a, or a, sla a drunk slave was enough, or, or I should be grateful for the opportunity to, to play in that world. It backfired because I, I didn't see myself that way. So I was doing all this work to try to act like this version of blackness, or like how the faculty saw black people. I, I tried so hard to do all that work, but it, It hurt because that was all I was ever going to be seen as. Even within those opportunities, it was, there was, it was nothing to celebrate. And it definitely wasn't what I came to university expecting to do for four years. I mean, coming into Pace University, Ryan Scott Oliver was a big reason why I chose to come to Pace. I wanted to work on new musicals. He was writing new musicals and he had a, a whole um, program or of, of classes where you could actually write musicals yourself. Um, I did two cycles 
of the of that class with Ryan Scott Oliver, working incredibly close with him. Um, I got firsthand, you know, experience of his limited view of how stories can be told. And that was put into practice in his production of Rope my senior year. I made the decision not to audition for the show. I didn't want to work with him. Amy, the head of our department, was directing it. By this time, I had no trust in either one of them. And I remember sitting at home during the auditions and getting messages from Ryan Scott Oliver telling me that the role um, was perfect for me and that I should really audition. I don't have to come to a callback. Just come in audition. We really want you to play this role. And then I, I learned after being cast that, um, well, the role changed in, from the first to the second act. So the first act, the role was a drunk priest. Um, he had lost faith, was drunk, and was tied to a young Irish boy. Um, in the second act, I was asked to play a slave. So there was one song um, about actual freedom in the second act, but it was sung by um, a, a white character. Looking back on it, I should have left the show. At that point, I was so defeated, I guess. I was so, um, I was uncomfortable every single day of that show. I, the impact that show had on me was that my voice didn't matter. Like, that anything that I could have said against the show didn't really matter. At that point in my career at Pace University, I was perfectly fine just not speaking anymore. I didn't feel like anybody really wanted to hear what I had to say. As low as I was, I didn't really want to hear what I had to say either. I mean, I'll just say, I mean, I was really, I mean, I was very disappointed when I saw the cast list of See What I Want to See, like during the summer before my senior year, because it said Saidu Sinla, janitor. To have a show where that didn't actually talk about race really at all, but talks about a lot of serious and important subject matters to have the faculty just kind of throw me back into this box of just being this demeaning role like yeah obviously all janitors are not black but there are also roles in that show that were that could have been very empowering for me and for other people of color and black people at Pace University to see. That could have been, had some significance, but it was never even considered. But another white lead, male lead type in my class within Pace University Musical Theater Department had another opportunity to play a empowering role. I think I, I search for any way to feel safe, wanted, and valuable. I mean, one way was smoking a lot of weed, which I would call self-medicating. I use sex as a way to, to feel beautiful and, and valuable and and also to distance myself from what the reality of what I was experiencing within the musical theater department. It had horrible effects. I thought at the time I thought I was doing fine. I thought I was 
working hard. I was doing everything I needed to do and I was enjoying myself. I would, you know, partially partial like healthy college exploration and then like the other side of like really damaging, um, dangerous behavior with drinking and smoking and sex. And it had consequences. I, I had a full mental breakdown before the summer, uh, during the summer before my senior year um, and spent a week in a mental hospital, sorting through all of these habits and, and situations that I thought I had worked through during the time and then realizing that I really put my, I was putting myself through, I was putting myself through it, like mentally, physically, everything. And it was the consequences of, of how I was coping with what was happening at Pace University within the musical theater department. After college, I had, I had to enter what was supposed to be the dream, you know? I questioned and doubted my ability to obtain my dream in every audition, in every performance opportunity. I questioned if I was doing good enough work. I questioned if I was working hard enough to obtain my dream. I, I questioned what I, if, if what I went through Pace University was being used against me behind closed doors. Um, basically, if my faculty was, was using their perspective of what, who I was and what I went through at Pace University um, and communi uh, against me with uh, casting directors or, or theater professionals. The, the mental gymnastics never stopped because I, I had to enter audition rooms and put all of that aside, all that baggage aside to try and be the best performer that I could be. Even though I really didn't believe that I, I was the best performer I could be. Because I didn't have the opportunity to explore it or, or build it or the support and encouragement to be my own authentic performer. It has to change. Something has to change. Something has to be reconsidered. And I want to say to the faculty now that they, that you have a responsibility to your students. Like they are putting their dream and their future in your hands and what kind of person are you if you misuse that, if you abuse that? What, what kind of person do you consider yourself to be? There is room to grow. And if you, can, if you keep it going the same way that it's going now, you, oof. I, like, I can't think about the countless amount of people that you have hurt. And at this point, if you consider yourself to be a good person, then you just have to accept that. You have to accept this reality as we re accepted the harsh, painful reality that you gave us, your version of it. You have to accept that this is our truth, that this is our, that this is for good. This is to make a better educational system for the people that want to perform and be musical theater professionals. And hopefully that will go on into the real world with, in this industry, this theater industry. And, and saying that that's just the way it is within the world is not enough and it's not okay. It's not okay. So fix it or get out of the way. I mean, the residue of my experience at Pace kind of made me incapable of speaking about it without like, I mean, it was like this tightness in my chest. Like I could not, I couldn't find the words to express it. And I kind of just had to create distance and space from, from people at Pace that, I, that reminded me, that triggered me. 
um, triggered my memory of like different things I went through. The reality is that I completely forgot who I was. I couldn't even re recall what my personality was before, before sophomore year. I mean, only in the last year, I have been able to actually address with, um, with care for myself um, what I went through and find some sort of, uh, you know, resolve to it. I think when I, when I did find, uh, find my voice again, I used the, the people that I knew, I know went through that experience or similar, a similar experience. I used them as a resource to, to revisit it as much as I felt comfortable. I reclaimed my, my joy and love for musical theater the best that I could. I stopped trying to, to be a certain way for a certain role or a certain project I was auditioning for, and instead just celebrate me in a way that should have been done throughout my four years at college. My way of working through it was to just find a sense of peace um, and acceptance of what happened and, and move with it. I decided to, you know, audition for grad schools, acting, MFAs, which was a, a big decision because I was really afraid that I was going to enter another institution that was going to abuse me and mistreat me. But it turned into kind of the best thing for me because it, it meant me actually coming to terms with what I experienced. And it meant me rec yeah, reclaiming my what performing means to me and what my mission statement is as an actor. Without this, I mean, with and without my past at Pace University. You know, letting that be a lens for what I actually want to do and what I want to change within the, the musical, within the acting and theater industry, it gave me those, it gave me that understanding and that it empowered me. Um, so yeah, I think just making active, really scary decisions to move, to take a, a step forward outside of that trauma and that pain really helped me rediscover who I was or, or even discover this new version of myself, who I am now today.